Jacob. For those of you who are not familiar with that greeting, it simply means peace be unto you. And we want you to have peace and we want you, um, we want to welcome you. And we want you to relax yourself because you're in for a treat today. We're going to have our very own dynamic brother, Dr. Minister Khaled Muhammad. But before he comes up, Brother Sabir Muhammad is going to say a few words. Relax yourselves. You're in your home away from home. And if you come in for the first time, you notice that we have a check procedure here. The check procedure is not designed to single anyone out. But it is designed to make sure that we have a safe meeting. Because we know that as black people raised in hell, raised in the hills of North America, we don't um, think too much, or we don't think as high about ourselves as we should. So consequently, we kill and murder one another. We carry weapons for one another. We carry guns and knives and, and pin knives and all sorts of weapons for each other. So we check you. We, not, we don't only check the physical weapons that you may have had on you, but we try to check your attitude. We try to see and try to leave you in a pleasant attitude. So if you came in with a disposition that was not suitable to receive the truth, then we hope that we could have corrected that just in the shaking of hands with one of the brothers or sisters that invited you here or that came uh, that met you when you came through the door. We want you to relax yourself. We want you to feel at ease, total ease, because this is a place of peace. This is Muhammad's mosque of Islam. This is Muhammad's holy temple of Islam. And in Muhammad's mosque of Islam, you and I receive the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, now represented, now represented by his servant, Minister Louis Farrakhan. So we want you to relax yourself. We want you to open your mind up. We want you to, as they say in grade school, put your thinking cap on. We want you to open your ears uh, very wide. We want you to pay close attention to what is going to be said today because we know that the words that come from this rostrum today might very well save your life. We are living in a very crucial time, brothers and sisters, a very critical time. It's crucial for the black man and woman, and it's crucial for the white man. But something has to happen for the black man to come into unity, to start unifying and start building. See, black people need to build. We need to build a black economy, a strong black economy, so that we can recycle our dollars like Koreans, Jews, Italians, and everybody else recycle theirs. Is that right? What's wrong with that? What if they call us a racist? Oh, you separatist group. You black, so that's uh, reverse racist. What if they call you that? How would you stand up to that? Hmm? You know, they're going to call us all kinds of things because they don't want black people to be unified. For one thing, they don't want us to be unified because they know that if we're unified and we start circulating our money, our ideas, our talents, huh? If we start circulating what God has blessed us with and sharing this with one another just the way other people do, then the white man knows that he won't be able to stick his hand in our pocket so readily. See, this is why he has to condemn a man like Farrakhan who is telling the truth to the people and uniting black people, causing us to do something for ourselves. So when that happens, the black man and woman come up and say, wow, I have a mind, I can think, I can create a job of my own. I can patronize my black brother and my black sister for goods and services just like I can a white man. So what do you think the white man thinks when he sees a, a black man like that standing up, teaching the truth, waking our people up? What do you think he thinks about him? And he got to call him something. So he calls him a hate teacher. He calls him an anti-Semite. Whatever that is. 
He's an anti-Semite, the, the white man called him. But as I heard my brother say, he is an anti-Hemite because we are Hemetic people, is that right? We are the first Jews, so if he calls Minister Farrakhan an anti-Semite, then he is to be called anti-black, the white man, the Jew, the one who controls, the one who gets behind the scenes and pulls the strings on the string for the puppets that stand up before us as true leaders. When they are not true leaders, these are, are leaders that have been made by the media, not by the people, because they don't speak the aspirations of the people. But we have a man on the scene today who is doing just that. He's speaking to the concerns of the black man and woman. He loves us so much, brothers and sisters, that it's like a mother's love. You know, a mother has strong love for her child. A mother will run into a burning building to get her child out. A mother will lift up a car to get it off of her baby. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? Well, we got a man like that in Minister Farrakhan, who was willing to jump into the jaws of the beast to get the black man and woman out. He is willing to go inside of hell with a gasoline jacket on to get me and you out of there. See, when this is why it's a shock message. It's a shock message. When the house is burning and on fire, you cannot go warn a people in a burning building by saying, Come on now, wake up. No, it's something of urgency, is that right? So it, the urgency of the cry for the black man and woman to get up, sometimes it shocks us when we hear for the first time that the white man is the devil. Some of us get shocked. But see, the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that says that the white man is the devil, the real one, not the one under the ground, but the real one. Not a spook, but a man. A live man is a devil. A live man is God. Always has been. But see, something happened to the black man and woman's knowledge in history. 66 trillion years ago, the uh, knowledge of God and the devil has been hidden from the general public. 66 trillion years. I didn't say million and I didn't say billion. It was 66 trillion years that this knowledge of God and devil had been kept from the general population of the planet. Now the black man since then has taken a turn, has taken a nose dive. His civilization has declined. And God gives rulership in turn. So when the decline of the black man uh, happened, then other people would come and rule in turn. The brown man has ruled since the original black man. The yellow man has ruled. The red man has ruled. And the last one to rule is the Caucasian white man. Now the scientists could look down the wheel of time by taking a poll or studying the thinking of the people, could look down the wheel of time and determine how long this man's civilization will last. You might find it hard to believe, brothers and sisters, but we have powerful men and women like this today. You get a glimpse of that kind of power when sometimes you can have a loved one in trouble. Or you get a phone call and you know who it is before you pick the phone up. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I know we do it all the time, don't we? Yeah. Well, this is some of the powers that we have been robbed of from eating the wrong food and been fed the wrong information, the wrong mental food. So we have a lot to gain. We have a lot. Uh, we have to strive. We have to take the uphill road to get back to our rightful place. The black man and woman must come up to take our rightful place. See, a lot of people say, well, we didn't get a turn. No, we haven't taken our turn. When you, you don't get your turn by waiting, sometimes you have to take your turn. So now it's our turn. It's our time. 
and my time is up. I'm going to bring my brother, Malik Farrakhan. He has a few words for you. Please receive him, Malik Farrakhan.